But let's go on and talk about the Commission for hu on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, which is hosting the regional integration of national human rights institutions in West Africa and the role they will be playing in making sure we achieve the SDGs. No Falong met up with the Shrash Commissioner, Joseph Wittal, and comes up with this. Welcome back. You're still watching New Day on TV3. My name is Nuong Falong. What do you know about the SDGs and the contribution of state institutions in the achievement of the SDGs? Well, there's going to be a regional consultation of West African human rights institutions right here in Accra on the 29th of May. And they're going to be touching on issues relating to achieving the sustainable development goals in Ghana and Africa. I have with me in the studio the Commissioner of Shiraj, Joseph Wittal, and he's going to give us more information on the areas they'll be touching on and how they intend to contribute to the accelerated achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Welcome to the program, Mr. Wittal. Thank you. On the 28th, 16 West African national human rights institutions will descend on Accra. And what we intend to do, and that is in an annual ritual, is to consult among ourselves on key thematic areas that national human rights institutions as human rights bodies for the promotion and protection of rights in each country should take forward. Learn best practices among ourselves in terms of what we are doing well in each country. And if you are not doing well in an area, you pick that and also use that to effect change. How do we educate people mm -hmm. more about the SDGs? So when we say SDGs, uh, the lady who is selling pure water on the street knows that mm -hmm. this is what we're talking about. Let me put it this way. The Sustainable Development Goals, which are actually called the Agenda 2030, is an international framework that all countries came together and signed at the UN. Specifically, there are 17 in number. They have 169 targets. And uh, if you look at the reach of the SDGs, they cover almost all that our development needs should yeah. entail right from education to health to infrastructure, climate, infrastructure, infrastructure everything, everything. But the novelty of our consultation is that we are not limiting it only to the SDGs, the Agenda 2030. As, an, as African countries and institutions, we are also looking at the convergence of the Africa we want, that is the Agenda 2063, which is a blueprint for Africa, which is a 50-year plan. And to see the convergence between what the SDG stand for and what we can do together with the Agenda 2063. Let's assume that during the course of 2020's elections, mm. we still have vigilante groups. How will that obstruct the achievement uh, of human rights objectives? You see, um, we must appreciate that elections are not held in a vacuum. Elections are actually a manifestation of the right to vote and to be voted for. It's a fundamental human right. That is why we are even trying to extend it to people, who, Ghanaians who are living abroad. It's a fundamental human right to determine who leads the country, who leads the, the development of this uh, country. And so when it comes to our consultations, we are looking at how we can learn from each other in terms of best practices. If vigilantism has confronted any country anywhere within the West Africa subregion, how they have, the measures they've taken to resolve it is something we would want to learn from. But to the question on the two parties and the vigilantism bill and, and, and all that, my point is 
these do not themselves resolve the problem. What, what will resolve the problem? Uh, getting the NDC and the MPP to come and, uh, of course, the matter is still being discussed or mediated by the Peace Council, but we should not depend only on what the Peace Council would come up with arising out of the meetings of the two parties. I believe in individual responsibility for criminal action. If anybody has gone to disturb the peace, gone to ransack a ballot box, gone to beat up people, and taken up, uh, you know, scattered ballots and, 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 and caused confusion, the person should be picked up by the police and promptly investigated, prosecuted, before a court of competent jurisdiction. We have the laws already. So I don't think the vigilantism bill will come to make anything new. Two, if you are talking about vigilantism and the disbandment, what constitutes disbandment? If you come out and do a pious statement that you have disbanded, but behind it, I don't know what you have gone behind in your offices, in your rooms, in terms of giving resources to people and, and, and others to go on their own, to go and do what they otherwise would have were doing in the past under the cover of a party. Has there been any difference? So let's not lull ourselves into a sense of uh, complacency let our security, and I expect the IGP and his men and women, with the support of the other state security around that time who can you know, come into support, not to take our election for 2020 for granted. Let's make sure miscreants who create a problem for elections are dealt with. Whether there's a bill, or not, whether the, the MPP and the NDC have, have disbanded or not. I think our security is in the hands of law enforcement and they should be seen to crack the whip. On your agenda, I see issues of human rights heavily featured, mm -hmm. also about security. In, in the last year, we have spoken a lot about impunity against journalists. We've had a lot of incidences in Ghana uh, to a point where a lot of journalists do not feel safe mm. in their practice. The UN system has developed uh, uh, principles for the defense of uh, human rights defenders. To what extent are we going to apply that to the protection of our journalists? Somebody has to speak up against impunity, against injustice, against corruption, and somebody has to report it. So if somebody reports it in his line of duty, should the result be target him and kill him, or brutally beat the person up so that the person is silenced? Should that be what we should expect? So what would be the contribution of national human rights institutions to sensitize our state actors, our members of the public, to appreciate the role of journalists who are, by the nature of their work, are thrown out there to do things that can bring harm to themselves. There were some reports of Bukinabis moving into Ghana, um, uncontrolled movement. Mm -hmm. Presently, close to 400 of them mm -hmm. have moved in and settled in the communities in the Upper West region, uh, among the Sisales, among the Tagabes. How do we solve this problem? West Africa has had this free intercourse among the communities, moving to and fro. Uh, we might have had some uh, level of colonial boundaries, but artificial boundaries do not, you know, divide people. The people still remain who they are. So movement between countries and within countries and to and fro is, has been with us. The emerging issues of threats to 
peace and security is what should now alarm us to ensure that that free movement and settlement is no longer taken for granted. Because some people with, with negative intentions could come in. Small arms are moving everywhere. As for the, the process of our borders, it is clear. We have a big problem. We need to appreciate the importance of making sure that our immigration service is brought up to a level that they can handle the border situation. We were still dealing with kidnappings, and these, all these porous borders contribute to, to okay, kidnapping, trafficking, and all of that. That is exactly why we shouldn't take our security arrangements for granted. We've been touting Ghana as a icon of democracy in West Africa and that everything is hunky-dory here. But it's about time we wake up. What is happening? Irregular migration into our country. We need to have data on what is happening. Because you can't, you can't sit and think that 400 people will just walk into your country and you do, you do nothing. At least document them. Know where they are, where they Don't move, you your names. so you can track them. Thank you so much, Mr. Wittal. That's all time will allow us. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, you heard Mr. Wittal. My takeaway from this session is impunity against journalists undermines our democracy. You're still watching Noonday. Stay with us.